NBC's Ryan Nobles is reporting on Capitol Hill. NBC's Julia Ainsley is in Washington, D.C. And also with us, Matt Gorman, Republican strategist, former senior communications advisor for Tim Scott for America, former NRCC communications director, and an aide to Jeb Bush and Mitt Romney. We also have former Democratic senator from Missouri, Claire McCaskill, MSNBC political analyst and co-host of MSNBC's How to Win 2024 podcast. Okay, Ryan. Do we have a sense now of how this is going to play out as we see folks gathering there on the floor? What are you watching for? Yeah, Chris, I still think there's a lot of unknowns as to how this process will play itself out. Uh, and we do expect that Republicans are going to do everything they possibly can to try and slow this process down, uh, putting out points of order or uh, bringing motions to the floor that they will hope at least extend this process. But normally, the Senate is a place where one particular member has an unbelievable amount of power to slow this process down. It's going to be a little bit different in this setting because this is a Senate trial. This isn't a piece of legislation that they're voting on. It requires 51 votes to continue or slow down or stop the process. So at any point, the Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer could theoretically just stand up and say, I'd like to offer up a motion to dismiss. If the 51 votes are there, the trial will effectively come to an end. There does, though, seem to be some appetite for al allowing Republicans to at least say their piece, make the points that they want to make about there being an extended trial. It's just not clear how long Democrats will allow that to go on. Listen to what the majority leader and the minority leader had to say about this process earlier today. It is the job of this body to consider the articles of impeachment brought before us and to render judgment. Tabling articles of impeachment would be unprecedented in the history of the Senate. It's as simple as that. To validate this gross abuse by the House would be a grave mistake and could set a dangerous precedent for the future. For the sake of the Senate's integrity and to protect impeachment for those rare cases we truly need it, senators should dismiss today's charges. So you see the arguments from the two sides there, and Republicans uh, concede that they think it's very unlikely that Mayorkas would actually be impeached, that there would be 67 votes uh, to impeach him in a situation like this, to convict him, I should say. But they still believe that the process should play itself out. There should be a full trial where all the evidence is presented. You heard Chuck Schumer's argument. They believe this is just a political grandstanding effort by Republicans and doesn't deserve the time of the U.S. Senate, which is why we fully su suspect that this process will wrap itself up pretty quickly. Chris. So, Claire, uh, they both have their reasons on both sides. You were there. We often talk about the fact, I think we mentioned this just yesterday, that the Senate was always seen as the body that was expected to be the grown-ups. What's the grown-up thing to do here in your mind? Well, um, the grown-up thing to do is to not have a trial uh, when what has been cooked up in the House is a mere political effort to highlight an issue that they think is going to get them votes in November. And that's what this is all about. Uh, there is no high crime. There is no misdemeanor. There is, a, you know, if, if this is going to be the standard for future impeachments, anybody could be impeached with a majority in this House just for having policy disagreements. That's the precedent that's worrisome, not a precedent over whether or not there's a trial. If if Mitch McConnell was really worried about Senate precedent, then he wouldn't have not allowed Barack Obama's Supreme Court nominee to not even be considered by the Senate. He wouldn't have rammed through a Supreme Court nominee within days of a presidential election. Now, that's some precedent-setting stuff that really has changed history in many ways. But dismissing this case... Uh, I think that would be the right thing to do for history because it would send a signal we are not going to play games on political grandstanding and policy differences. Is it the right thing to do, though, Claire, politically? Because there is an argument that has been made that if the Democrats say, no, we're going to shut this down for all the reasons that you just lined out, and yes, for a precedent uh, that you don't want to set, does it give an opening to Republicans to go out there and say, at a time when we know Joe Biden is already being hurt on the immigration issue, for Republicans to be able to go out and say they don't even want to talk about this? 
No, because I think there is an awful lot of evidence that the Democrats do want to talk about it. They're the ones that put a bill together with Republicans after the Republicans asked them to, to actually address the border issue. Uh, and that bill came together in a bipartisan way with really dramatic, tough changes in border policy. But the Republicans didn't want to take it up. They didn't want to talk about it because that would show progress for the president and the Democrats on this issue. They just want the issue, Chris. That's all they want. And they're going to have the issue whether this trial occurs or not. The thing for the Democrats to do is to push back on immigration, not to hold a sham trial when there are no high crimes or misdemeanors even being contemplated by these proceedings. Matt, is this a legitimate inquiry or is it what should always have been just a policy disagreement which has to be worked out every day on Capitol Hill? Yeah, I think this was more a tactic that I think Republicans in the House saw as a way to elevate immigration when there was a divided primary. This was more of a, a kind of a, a thing they were hoping that could shed light on immigration last year when we didn't have a presumptive nominee. Now that we do, you look at this, you look at the impeachment of Joe Biden, those things now tend to fizzle when you really get a one-on-one -on -one race. There's less of, you know, the need for that politically. And I think what this is going to come down to is you have each side is an issue that they feel they have an advantage on, and the other side doesn't want to talk about as much. For Republicans, it's immigration. And for the left, it's abortion. I think with the economy as kind of that issue kind of hovering overall. So what I think you're going to ha what's going to happen is, at the end of the day, whichever side wins out on that issue is going to be the one that's going to be holding the White House in November. In the meantime, we are closely watching what's happening on the Senate floor, Julia. How are Secretary Mayorkas and the Biden administration approaching this trial? Well, Mayorkas was in New York City this morning announcing a new plan from DHS to try to combat child sexual exploitation online. That's something he's taken really serious uh, in his time as Homeland Security Secretary. And we had someone from NBC there who asked him how he's contemplating this trial going on. Would he step forward? And he just kind of had a really nonchalant response, a very sober response, saying that he expects the Senate to do whatever the Senate thinks is appropriate. But it's just another indication that he basically sees this as a waste of time for the Senate, and he doesn't want to have it waste any of his time. He said something similar on CBS this morning. Take a listen. As they work uh, uh, on impeachment, I work in advancing the mission of the Department of Homeland Security. That's what I've done throughout uh, this process. Um, we need Congress to pass the bipartisan legislation that a group of senators worked on. That is the enduring solution. Uh, we cannot uh, resource ourselves. We need Congress to do so. So we've always known that it would be extremely rare to see Secretary Mayorkas at any of these proceedings. When it was a House committee considering whether or not to impeach him, he was there was a back and forth. He said he could make himself available. He wasn't available on the exact day they wanted him to be. They dropped it and moved on. And now we understand for this trial, which will likely not take place, he also thinks that it would really not be pertinent for his time when he has so many big issues, not just on immigration, but also on... Things like cybercrime, preparing our election infrastructure to make sure it's safe from attacks and foreign influence before the 2024 November election. All of these things are on his plate and basically the message we've received over and over again from the secretary himself and from the Biden administration is that, look, we're not going to waste our time on this, but what they really see is theatrics here. Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.